starting here at 1 p.m. Eastern time, so just another two minutes. All of our webinars will begin a couple minutes, just in order to ensure everybody gets in, can join the conversation. Hope you're having a great day, guys, and we'll begin very, very shortly, so thank you. And uh, meanwhile, we'll just take a little drink of water from our Broadloom swag. It's one of my favorite uh, favorite pieces of swag that I've ever been given from any company. So number one shout out, this is the swag. If you take nothing else from this webinar, take that one. <laughs> Just uh, one more minute here and we'll get started. So thank you. Just settle in, get a piece of paper out, get ready to take some notes. Uh, we'll be moving along at a good clip, but keep in mind you can always rewatch this after it's finished. So thank you. All right, just a few more seconds. Thanks for waiting. Give people a nice cozy entrance. Okay, this week on Broadloom's Webinar Wednesday, we have the leaky lead bucket, what it is and how to prevent it. So the clock starts ticking the moment a lead comes into your business. So much like carrying a water in a leaky bucket, the longer you hold on to that lead before getting them to their goal, the more likely it'll spill out and be gone forever. And to get this going here, my name is Tyler Cobb. I am a senior product manager here at Broadloom, and my role is to just manage the strategy and development of a suite of products uh, that help flooring dealers like yourselves grow and run their businesses. Fun fact here, I'm an avid board game geek. This is one of me and my wife's favorite pastimes is after a long week, we unwind over uh, coffee or tea or whatever our beverage is for that day. And uh, we love all kinds of board games, but spreads specifically strategy games like Catan, Scythe. Uh, shoot, we even played this really awesome one. It's Wings, and it's all about birds, which you never thought you'd learn that much about birds in my whole life, but it's a lot of fun. To that point, if you have a great board game for me to try, put it in the chat. Um, speaking of the chat, this chat is uh, live for everybody to see, but um, I encourage you to interact on there. Interact with your fellow webinar uh, people because they have experiences that they can share, and I encourage you to do that for yourself. So if you see something here that I'm talking about that resonates with you and you want to share that, put it in there. If you have a question, drop it in there. May not address it at the very beginning because we'll be doing the webinar, but at the end, we will absolutely get to your question. So thank you. Use the chat. <laughs> so let's get into it, my friends. All right. The... Three leaky bucket issues, rules of three for presentations. It's very important. So, and why there's so many uh, leads left at the end of this process is because you either have holes in your bucket. So your, your water bucket literally is not holding the water. And for water, it's life-giving essence. And so it's, it's everything that you need to grow your business and help it stay healthy throughout its life. And so if we think about that, leads are very much the same way. And if there's holes in your bucket and leads are spilling out along the way, you're going to not be left with enough to nourish your business and to grow it. So holes, number one, we got to get rid of them. The second is having no plan. So I've got all these leads coming in. I'm collecting all this water from these different sources. So but then I don't know what to do with it. I'm going over here, I'm going over here. I'm not sure where it goes next. And so not having a plan is a huge problem for leads. And then finally, if you're just too slow, you will eventually, all of your water, all of that life-giving nourishment will just flow out onto the ground. 
maybe your competition will drink it up and they'll be happy and that's all good for the community but not good for you so let's let's take a look into what are some ways that we can tackle these issues so that you have a healthy happy business and while this is specifically for flooring this these practices are best practices across most uh, businesses that use and generate leads e-commerce uh, maybe you'll find a few points but Specifically, this is about flooring dealers and what they can do with the leads for their business. Now, number one, plug the holes before filling the buckets. So Frank Seinberg, a world famous author and thought leader said it best. Uh, and where are these gaps in your process? You have this, you have these initial sources and these initial sources could be anything from emails uh, from a number of people. They could be emails uh, going to a number of people. They could be Facebook messages, social media posts, uh, gosh, ads, smoke signals, call, phone calls, whatever it may be. You need to have a very tight grasp and understanding of where these leads are coming in, where your different water sources are coming from, and make sure that you're collecting that in one central place. And because why that's important is because that's where you can just put a tight, tight control around making sure that all the leads that once they get there, they're taken care of. And that's the most important thing, it's taking care of the leads. And so the next step in that process is managing the handoffs. These, the holes that are gonna be present, they're gonna show out the strongest in how you collect the leads and then how you're handing them off from one person or one step to the next. And similarly, appointments is a really big aspect of this. So if you've got appointments that you're scheduling for measurements or for a person to walk into your store and do a, uh, do a, a shopping experience with one of your reps, this is such a big deal. They have set time out of their schedule to, to meet with you, to talk about something that they want to hand you money for and you give them something. So Treat this with all the honor and respect it deserves. Make sure that they are aware of the appointment. Make sure that they are that they uh, are prepared for the appointment. That they know what to expect about the appointment. To to follow up after the appointment and let them know what you covered and what the next steps are. There's so many touch points here. It's so important. These are huge holes though that we see all the time in these uh, businesses where just leads are bleeding out of these buckets. And the, the, the most important thing here is that I'm gonna also give you clear, concise steps on what you can do this week to help fix these issues. And so I'm gonna chunk these out into three steps because the rule of three is very critical. Uh, so in this first one, we have last 10, next 10 tracing. And what this process looks like is you're just gonna go through your last 10 leads in your business and you're gonna write each step in the process. So go and interview the, the person that, that worked with them or the people that worked with them. You know, Take very detailed notes. And you can just throw this up in a spreadsheet. You can create a, a big piece of paper and literally write down a, a name and what each step they went through. And whether they converted or not does not matter at this point, but you will notate which ones converted because that will be important later. Um, and how far did they make it through these steps? Uh, so. Why 10 before and why 10 after? Um, in, in my experience, if you only looked at the befores, it's sometimes hard to remember all the great things that you do, you know, with an individual through the, the steps. And so you may miss some very, very important, nuanced, small things that, that are really gonna be game changing. So that's why look at the last 10, but then also look over their shoulders for the next 10 and write down each of those steps. And maybe they're a little weirded out that you're you know, taking note of every little thing they do, but I promise you this is gonna be a really good experience for both of you. And you'll be able to compare and contrast, You know, hey, how are these two things working together? So best practices will start floating to the top. Uh, what you do is compare and contrast, which one's converted, how far they make it, and highlight the good ones. Just, just take a highlighter, or if you're using a spreadsheet, you know, highlight those cells. 
what were the best practices that you loved and saw and engage your your team with this this is this is a a, a team building exercise as well and in, in helping them feel bought into the process development and the maturation and the sophistication of of these things evolving into something new and even more powerful and, and helpful. So then we have the next one. Ah, no plan. So it's better to have a bad plan than no plan. Gary Kasparov, the one of the, the undeniably greatest chess players of all time, he said this. And so if he, a master strip strategist, yes, yeah, strategist, master strategist, has the the know-how and the wisdom to say, hey, look, just make a plan. It doesn't have to be perfect. Implement that plan. You'll learn from it. It'll grow. It'll get better. I, I strongly encourage you to take that to heart. So make sure everyone knows the process and think about it. Think about these plans from this way. So what has this customer already experienced? You know, always look from their viewpoint. What have they already told your business? What have they, uh, what have they been sent? What files have they sent? What information have they given? Um, what have they been told about what's next to expect? And then that really begins to shape also the culture of your business is that you're not looking at it, hey, John in sales, what did you do with this lead, this lead, this lead? You're saying, hey, what did Maria experience when she came and interacted with our company? And that that humanizing viewpoint is going to make such a bigger impact on your company than anything else you learn here today that I, I, I hope you're writing this down. And so the next step is, what do I do now? And so something has happened. Now, does the person that has the, the ball, if you will, <laughs> will, do they know what they need to do? Do they have uh, a template, a script? Do they uh, know what they need to send? Do they know what information they required from the step before in order to do the step they're on? And then conversely, what happens next? What are they sending over to the next person in the line? Um, if it's just one person, that's okay. You can think of these as discrete steps in the process because you're still passing it from one phase to the next. And that customer needs to, to feel that seamlessly across the board so it's not jarring and disconnected. That's no good for anybody. And so what can we do this week to, to fix this? And so yeah, real quick segue, I've broken this up into three different things. We're going to have three different weeks that we can tackle and I've chunked it out into about four to five hour efforts that I think is a very reasonable goal for, for you to go off and be able to execute these types of changes. And so what can we do about not having a great plan? Well, step one, create a playbook. Playbooks are super critical for any playing any game uh, strategically to its best ability. And so document that ideal sales process, process. So remember in step one, we were going through, we we're highlighting all the best ones take those and consolidate them down into a just a written out process, all the steps. And so different plays for different situations is very important here too, because if a customer comes in and they've walked into your, uh, your dealership and they, uh, they have, hey, this is what I'm here for, this is what I wanna buy, the playbook for that customer is gonna be very different than the playbook of the individual that submitted a web contact form. And so having these different playbooks is paramount for your team to be able to provide that seamless experience for the customer and to be super hyper efficient with what they're doing and when they're doing it. Next step, you have to teach it. So you have to dedicate regular training time. Guys, if you send an email with these playbooks and say, hey, read these and start doing these, I can almost promise you a 0% <laughs> acceptance rate of that playbook. You have to teach it. You have to dedicate this time. And I encourage uh, some best practices I've seen is have others instruct it. You know, John, he had this great methodology that he did when uh, 
individuals would walk into a store and ask for this or that. And he did this perfect thing and it was beautiful. Don't do it. Don't you teach it. Let him teach it. That's that's his baby. That's his. Let them have buy in into this process because that is going to shape some of the culture. And finally, we, we have to enforce it. So you're going to have to dedicate time every week in not just you, your, your sales managers, your sales leaders, maybe peer review. I don't know. That might be weird. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But if you try that, let me know how that works out. Um, but enforce it. So, uh, you know, sample these lead flows, see if each of the individuals followed the playbook and reward or coach alignment with this playbook. You know, I, I prefer the carrot over the stick myself, um, but you have to make the hard calls. And so if if Kevin keeps going out and doing things outside of the playbook, set him aside and coach him in the moment of, hey, why are you doing it this way? Is this something that everyone should be doing it? Is there is there some nuance here that we're not picking up in our playbooks? And if not, then we need to course correct, hey, we need to follow the plays because everyone else is depending on you being in the spot that you said you would be in and having this individual experience the things that we agreed for them to experience. And so again, Knowing when you get that bucket of water to return back to our metaphor here, you get that bucket of water and you know exactly where to take it to. It doesn't matter if some of it is is kind of dribbling out the sides. You're going to get it there super quick and efficient. And that's going to be hugely critical. And fast and efficient is the name of the game for the next big um, the next big point. So. Time is the greatest frenemy to conversion. And this one, I coined this phrase. I, I Googled it. I'm pretty sure I'm not copywriting. But uh, anyway, if, if you find uh, someone else has said it, that's awesome because what are the odds? Um, but yeah, look, guys, here's the facts. The average response time on web leads is 17 hours. That is a massive gap from I'm submitting a web form. I want to do business with you. I am interested in your business. And it takes 17 hours to get a response back. Like these days, that that just doesn't work. And maybe 50 years ago, that was okay. But we are, we are fast now. So 50% um, of leads will choose the first vendor who contacts them. This is anecdotally true from my own experiences. I used to move every year for like 10 years, a decade of moving. And I would most often hire a moving company because moving is the worst thing on the planet. Um, but I would submit a bunch of web forms and because I don't like talking to people on the phone, but the literally, I wouldn't think about it, but the first vendor that would contact me, I they would get my business almost not almost every time. It wasn't about price. It was, it was just, hey, they're ready to do the work. And you know what? Why would I not give them the work instead hope that someone else responds Guys, you, you have to be the first person to contact them back. And the best way to do that is to immediately follow up when they reach out to your business. So calling within five minutes improves your conversion rate 21 times. And guys, I'm not making up these statistics. These are all like beautiful case studies. Um, if you ever are wanting more ammo for your, your sales team and about getting them fired up about fast response times on contacts, go out and Google uh, conversion rates impacted by, you know, first response or something like that. I promise you, you're going to get a ton of hits and way more data than you, than you want. So if, as long as you believe me, time is so important. Let's move on to what we can do about it. All right. What can we do this week? We can measure it. So first and foremost, on, it could be that same spreadsheet. You could start noting the time for first response set up you know, some kind of method of measurement. And that may be looking at the timestamps on emails and contact forms. That may be, uh, you know, quizzing your team about, hey, when'd you call this person? Um, so it, it's a little harder if you're still in the, the, the post-it note paper kind of era of your business, and that's okay. Work with what you got. Um, but no matter what, set goals. So what's the current average time for across the last 10 to 20 leads? Okay, that's your new goal. So anytime 
someone, anytime a lead starts floating up above that goal line, hey, guys, what's going on? Where, where, why are we not reaching out to this person yet? And so driving that down. And each time that averages down, that's a win. Celebrate it with your team. And I promise you, you're going to start seeing your conversion rates creeping up, which is a great thing for your business because every person that raises their hand, every lead that raises their hand says, I want to do business with you. They deserve <laughs> your, they deserve your, your best effort and, and a fast response time. Um, I know we'd want it as consumers. We expect it as consumers. Let's, let's do it as, as business people. So, and then finally, improve it, discover these best practices. And you will likely, to get beyond a certain point, you will have to use tools and incentives to, to drive substantial improvement. Um, you're going to have to look into automation or um, tracking software to, to help notify you and aggregate these leads and, and make sure that the, an individual person is assigned and ready to work that lead immediately. Uh, tools will absolutely be critical. So lead capture and management, as you continue uh, to, as you're thinking through those kind of steps that we talked about, you're going to fall into different buckets of, of concern here. And, and what problems are you facing as you scale your business? And so the, the, the answers to these questions, you know, like, do you feel that you have very little processes? You know, can you, can you point to, to playbooks or, or pseudo playbooks that uh, to that define what you expect for your customers' experiences. Do you have, um, can you point to where you have a lot of leads coming in through a particular channel and yet they, they seem to get one or two steps in and then they're gone? And, uh, or is it siloed information? Is Do you always have to go to one individual who has the information? Or if you picked up uh, whatever information on a lead that you have, would you know what to do with them next? Uh, those are the very real problems of the business that as you scale, these will become bigger and bigger until they they balloon into an issue that has to, to be addressed. So thinking about these best practices for scaling your business, there's you can reasonably chunk it out into three levels of, um, of evolution with respect to lead management. So level one, you're a, a, a one man crew one woman crew, one person's crew that handles every lead. You're hyper efficient. You're self-managed. You know everything. You know everything about everyone. And it is one of the most efficient times in your business that you will ever see. So enjoy it. Embrace that period. Eventually, you're going to get to kind of a, a plateau and you're going to see, hey, uh, I'm maxed out. Um, I'm starting to drop things in between the cracks. And I need to go out and hire someone to free me up to do other business management things. So that's level two. You're starting to hire new people. And these new people require processes to be established. They don't know what to do. Maybe maybe they've done it before somewhere else, but that's a completely different business. That's a completely different location. Um, you're going to need to write these processes down and then train them. Give them really great training and formalize those things and listen to them and incentivize them and correct them. It's, you know, it's like picking up any sport you, you ever do. It doesn't matter how athletic that person was or how they were good they were at this other sport or this other on this other team. You need to train them on how you coach, on how you practice, on how you run drills, you run plays. This is your business. So keep that in mind. Spreadsheets and emails, leverage to track leads is, is pretty common at this phase still. Like you, you might still be using these things, which is great. Um, they work. I think spreadsheets are the best no code uh, tool of all time. <laughs> but eventually you'll get to a point where um, collaborative spreadsheets are starting to get bloated and weighed down and it's getting harder and harder to uh, track things and, and coordinate communications across things. So this is where you start to recognize that you have come to a new level and that's level three. And this is where processes have become a part of your DNA. Um, key metrics are, are tracked and approved on. And Rod, I, I love your, your question up there. I'll, I'll talk about that here in a little bit in the Q&A because we've got some time set aside for that. So that's a great question. Um, but 
these key metrics are going to help um, improve your business. In, in, in le- As they always say, you can't improve what you're not measuring. And that's so true here too, is with lead management. If you're not keeping an eye on uh, that that key that cont- first contact response time, if you're not keeping an eye on the uh, conversion rates across your different salespeople, across your different locations, across your different channels, it's going to be very difficult to see continuous growth and improvement in your business. And then finally, uh, software to guide and document these leads journey is going to be a game changer for your business because that's there's there's these tools built specifically for this exact use case. And to that point, uh, I would be ashamed not to mention Broadloom's lead management software. So this is exactly that. It's built by flooring dealers for flooring dealers, built for the sales process. And so this is going to help you define what are your expected stages of the process to make sure that customer experience is fluid and consistent. And then what is that next best task to do that allows you to do the work and get it done and move it to that next task? And ultimately is to convert more prospects. But again, don't forget, these are not just sales numbers. These are people that are making a huge purchase decision in their life and they deserve the absolute best experience. And if you give that to them, they will reward you with word of mouth and grace and uh, just respect. And you do this consistently for a year, two years, your word of mouth and referrals are going to go through the roof because you are consistent in how you're delivering uh, these these touch points along the customer journey and making this purchase decision so much easier for them. And final thoughts here to, to wrap up with an, you know, flooring stores, typically average ticket, 5K maybe, maybe you're up, maybe you're below that, that's fine. But think about it, if you track and manage your leads and you close one more lead per salesperson per month, what can you do with an extra thousand bucks, 2000 bucks? A, a month, you know, um, it's it's really really crazy to think about the dividends that these types of efforts will make in your business. So I know we're all busy. I know we're out there doing the best we can to to just get a tiny sip of water, and it feels kind of crazy to go super thirsty for a little bit to patch bucket holes and to plan out playbooks and all that. But uh, if you want your team to to be well nourished. Uh, please take the time to invest in these activities. Managers, I call on all of us. We have to hold our people responsible and accountable for activities, not because they can't do it themselves, but because that's our role as leaders, same as as a leader in your family or a leader in your church or a leader in your community. You have to hold them accountable because otherwise, how do they know what's best for for the uh, for the company and so and the customers and just instilling that culture in them will will be a big moving factor. So, and then finally, software gives superpowers. It's a multiplier uh, factor for tracking and managing leads. Um, you can absolutely do this in spreadsheets. I gave you lots of tips and tricks today to to help lay the groundwork of your business. But when you're ready for it, software is there for you. So now. We uh, come to q and Rod, I'd love to, to hop into yours. Uh, first and foremost, what metrics would we track? Um, so yeah, I, I mentioned a few of them. I love time to first contact. Uh, that's an awesome one. Um, the, the conversion rates that I mentioned are, are really important. I also like to look at uh, cost per lead. So Think about like how all of your uh, all of your money spent into ads and the the number of leads that are being generated, and then finally you follow that down the the funnel and you get to you know cost per customer, costs uh, per acquisition, and those are really important metrics to keep an eye on um, at, at a weekly level. Um, yeah, you're looking at the 
uh, like the costs, uh, the first contact response times at a monthly level, probably the other ones, conversion rates and stuff. There's there's probably not going to be a whole lot you can do on a week by week basis. And just just focus on that, getting that contact response time down, make a huge improvement for your business. All right. Uh, yeah, we have a, another comment here. Yeah, the, the carrot method hasn't worked for our sales team. Setting up lead tracking, have to opt in the program and sign that they agree to the rules. If they don't, no more leads. Do, yeah, I, you, you know, I, I do the same thing with my kids. I, I say, hey, you, you do these things and, you know, you'll get a, a small allowance and uh, they choose not to do those things. Well, OK, now you're going to do it and you're not getting the allowance. So it's it, and you. I like that you approach it from a, hey, here's the expectation. Here's what you're going to do. And at the end of the day, as long as you're explaining to them why they're doing it, and it's not just a, a management thing, they have to understand. Otherwise, they're just not the right person for your business. So that that's the hard calls. But yeah, great, great, great questions. Uh, is lead management software the th same thing as CRM or customer relationship management? Um, yes and no. So they are, they're basically cousins. Um, so lead management software, kind of the pre CRM. And so for those of you who are maybe wondering what customer relationship management is, it's a software dedicated to just totally encompassing what all the information about a particular customer. So uh, where they're at, what what their information is, all of that. The and some of them have a flavor of the lead management side of things, but they're not going to, they're not built for purpose for lead management, and that's that's the big big difference in the two. So a lot of times, I see the best stacks have a dedicated lead management solution. Maybe it's a module in a particular. Uh, CRM, but they have a dedicated lead management software that houses the process. And then they have a dedicated um, a CRM solution to to manage all of the contact history and all the touch points and all, all of that. So, uh, and you can also drive a lot of times automation and those types of things out of the CRM. So that's, that's really powerful for the business too. Uh, how often should I be measuring or reporting on lead metrics? Uh, we, we kind of touched on this one, but just a quick recap. In my opinion, and I, I'd love to hear best practices from, from you all if you have any, but I've I've seen that every week for some things. So every week we you would get together with your team for half an hour and you'd go through first contact response times per uh, rep. Make this a, a badge of pride. Um, Talk about it. You know, how can we work together to drive those down? What are you doing better than than you know this person? And it's it's collaborative. It's not like judging. Um, so just create that safe space there for them. And uh, number of new leads, that that kind of thing. Things that people can get excited about the overall health of the business on a weekly basis, on a monthly conversion rates. Um, you know, uh, margins cost for acquisition, those those are really cool metrics that I, I think will be tactically useful. Um, be wary of vanity metrics that are just funny, glossy things that you don't really help you make decisions better because those are just distracting, so. Um, all right, we create a call center. All these go through here and schedule to follow up by the call center. The call center employees get paid per converted lead. That's yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, I, I like that. They, I mean, that's, that's where you're getting to that next evolution of, Hey, we are outgrown being able to just do things one off and handle all the volume of leads. That's, that's really exciting when you're getting to the point where you're bringing on call centers and, and help. And you might be able to do that at an earlier stage than you think. It's really just about gauging uh, the different inflection and decision points as your business scales. And I just encourage you to talk with one another about, uh, you know, how each of you are growing because we're, we're in this together and it's not a zero sum game. Like, uh, you know, 
the guys in Miami can grow, we can grow. It's it all works together. So, all right. Uh, we have another question here. If I don't see a lead in our CRM with notes within an hour of giving it out, I reassign the lead. Only had to do that twice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're you're either in it or you're not, and that's okay. Maybe maybe you're distracted with uh, some other important project, but at the end of the day, it's not about what you're taking away from that individual. It's about the experience that that customer has, and that's the most important thing. And I'm sorry that you know, for some people that might rub you the wrong way because oh, that was my lead. I was assigned to. I was going to get to it. Sorry, we have we have a one hour policy and that's what our customers expect and that's what we're going to deliver. I that's awesome. Yeah. Uh okay, how do I roll out something like lead management software to my team? Okay, this is a big question and so uh my recommendation is treat it like a big deal. It is a huge deal. Um, and you know, we just went through a lot of the steps in what it will take to even think out what your lead management process might look like or to improve it if you're already doing a little bit of it. Probably most of you are doing some or more or all. Um, but spend a month setting up, spend two months. Uh, you and your sales manager, you know, you should be working with them to get their buy in on those steps in the process. Don't go off in a room by yourself to build this. This that is a terrible waste of um potential because everyone will first be er, no i don't i don't want this you you have to bring them along for the journey and make sure that they're bought into why it's important and present you could do that by presenting problems in your customer experience and see how your sales team might suggest solving for it uh you know help them resonate with that customer experience that's 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 a big deal create note templates um that prompt them in various stages on what to do. So those note templates are going to be really impactful. I've seen this uh, with some of my uh, favorite dealers who are big users on the retail lead management is they they actually have them and documented and they go and copy and paste and say, hey, your note at this stage better have these or answer these five questions, um, which is really cool. So shout out to, <laughs> to Simply Floors. Yeah, love you guys. Um, anyway, the set aside a full day to train and practice and live in the software together. I mean, this is, this is a big deal. Like I said, it's a big deal, full day, train it, practice it, iterate, live in it, and then make it fun. Celebrate the best lead management behaviors. You have to measure it and compare it, especially the first month. Be consistent. You're going to get a lot of friction. You have to be consistent. Same thing with having a kids or family or coaching a team. If you're not consistent, they're going to walk all over you, walk all over the process because it's not required. They've sold flooring before without it. Um, but being consistent, course correcting, even on those little bitty nuanced uh, outliers, it'll it'll take time. But it's the best way I can think of to, to roll something like this out. So. All right. Uh, if you have any other questions, please email me uh, tyler.cobb at broadloom.com. Uh, I'm here for you and I love this engagement, really appreciate it. And we actually have one more question. Um, uh, is this lead thought process only for retail or do you view all leads the same? I'm referring to builder commercial and so on. Wow. Uh, fantastic question. So I, each of those channels will have a different process but you absolutely will want the same thought process put into each one of these. And I would recommend doing one at a time because those are each in their own totally different uh, sales cycles. They're going to have different players, different individuals involved, different you know, uh, requirements at each stage. Please do not try to roll out all four at once. <laughs> Just pick the simplest one, work with that team, then use the case study of growth and success from that team and leverage it to the next team in those learnings and say, hey, look, these guys just doubled their revenue in the same period that we've you know, not. And so this process is awesome. They all love it. Here's a quote from John. He loves it. Uh, and, and so take those learnings to the next one and just kind of work down the line. It's going to take you, I don't know, maybe six months, a year to do it. but yeah, 
they're absolutely different. Um, different, different pipelines, different, different processes. So, all right. Uh, one last announcement. I want to, as we close out, I want to encourage you all. Next week's webinar is a sneak peek into an inside look um, into his mini boot camp. America's floor source CEO Jason Goldberg will give us a sneak peek exactly what it takes to be a $180 million flooring business. And later this month, Jason will open up the doors to the AFS campus in Columbus and give a few lucky retailers a true inside look into one of America's most successful flooring empires. Join us June 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for an early sneak peek. Thank you so much.